I'm Zhang Haowu, a PhD student at UC Berkeley Sky Computing Lab, and today I'm going to talk about this can be late uh, optimizing spot instance savings under deadlines. Um, this is a work with a bunch of great folks, Wei Ling, Ziming, Zhonghen, Eric, Scott, and Yan. And let's get started. Nowadays, clouds are widely adopted, and people have realized that clouds are quite expensive. For example, AWS Intel CPUs and V100 GPUs can cost $70 per day, and for 8 A100 GPUs, it can cost $800. Um, this makes the life hard for users trying to run their uh, compute-intensive workloads like AI workloads on the cloud. Meanwhile, most of the cloud providers offer a resource type called spot instances, which can be a good opportunity to save cost. Taking the same instances as an example, the Intel CPU can save 2.7 times cost on spot instances, and similar things happen for V100 and A100 uh, GPUs as well. So why don't we just ask everyone to use spot instances to save the cost? The problem is, in the cloud, spot instances are also annotated as preemptible, which means the instance can be interrupted and taken back by the cloud providers. Um, we collected availability traits on the AWS Spot V100 instances across different zones. Here, the horizontal line are the uh, time the instance is available, while the vertical line is the preemptions. And as we can observe here, the instance can be preempted very frequently, and the availability varies across different zones. So in order, in order to handle all these kind of preemptions, a user running their jobs on spot instances has to have a system to monitor their jobs and recover them from the preemption when uh, on the spot instances. So in our previous NSDI paper, SkyPilot, we built an inter-cloud broker system which enables the user to use spot instances and handle such preemptions automatically. Now let's take a look at a real example where we train a Vicuña LM chatbot on SkyPilot managed spot. On the left-hand side, it is the training curve of the model, and we can see five different colors in the curve. Each represents a different spot instance. So SkyPilot automatically detected the four preemptions and recovered the job uh, on different spot instances. It can reduce the cost for the model training from $1,000 to $300. And this looks a great amount of savings, um, but some of you may have already noticed that what if some of the spot instances, like during some period of time, the spot instances are just unavailable and our job will make no progress. And this is a problem we actually met before. When we changed the accesses from the number of, epo uh, number of epochs to the war time, we can observe big uh, gaps between different spot instances, which means the spot resources are just unavailable during that period. And that caused the job making no progress. And this unavailability issue has been become more and more popular uh, during the day due to the GPU shortage. This New York Times article says AI companies are having a hard time um, hunting for GPUs. So with all this kind of uncertainty, if you want to finish the training before a specific deadline, um, for example, 6 p.m., how do we make it sure uh, the job can finish by then? Uh, like, for example, we want to do evaluation or release by the deadline. Um, this uncertainty makes the uh, delay sensitive applications is to spot instances in favor of on-demand instances. And that motivates us the research of using both spot and on-demand instances for deadline sensitive applications. Um, we now formulate the problem a bit more. As we just mentioned, we want to minimize the cost for the job with a specific deadline. Um, here we denote the re remaining computation time at timestamp t to be ct and the remaining time to deadline to be rt. Then the following uh, example where c0 equals to 48 hours and the uh, deadline to be 60 hours r0, uh, we, we actually means we want to finish a job that requires 48 hour computation time to finish before the 60 hour deadline. The diagram at the bottom shows by placing the job on on-demand instances only, we can finish the job within 48 hours, but with a high cost. Now, if we try to use spot instances only for the job, 
we can see that although we place the job on every available spot instances before the deadline, we still cannot finish the job by 60 hours. And it is not applicable by just using spot instances for the job, although it saves a significant, significant amount of cost. So is it possible to design a policy that behaves in between that we can use some spot instances to save some costs, but also we use on-demand instances to make sure we make the deadline? Um, we first take a look at a simple case where no changeover delay is involved. Here, the changeover delay represents the prov uh, provisioning, setting up, initializing a new instance, as well as the, any progress loss during the preemption. Um, while no changeover delay uh, is involved, we can get an optimal policy that uh, uses both spot and on-demand instances uh, for job before deadline. That is, using only spot instances until the remaining computation time for the job CT is equal to the remaining time to the deadline RT. After that, the policy has to use every minute uh, before the deadline to run the job. So we just switch between spot and on-demand. Uh, we use spot whenever it's available and uh, switch off to on-demand when it's not. So it's provable that such policy is optimal since we have already utilized all the low-cost spot instances before the deadline. However, when the changeover delay involves, which is the normal case in the real world, the problem becomes non-trivial. The original optimal policy will no longer work because every switch between spot and on-demand instances will cause a changeover delay that does not make any progress for the job, but still taking the time that should be used for job computation. And that said, the original policy, the original optimal policy failed to work, uh, failed to make the job meet the deadline uh, due to the additional overhead caused by changeover delay. And the problem becomes non-trivial as we have no idea what's the spot availability in the future and the policy cannot, um, uh, cannot know in advance that how much time it should, should save for the future overheads. So by investigating this problem a bit more, we actually find that uh, there are three basic, uh, basic rules that the policies that tries to solve this problem should follow. Thrifty rule, safety net rule, and exploitation rule. We'll discuss them one by one. Firstly, the thrifty rule, the instance should remain idle after CT equals zero, which is quite intuitive. That means once the job is completed, completed no more instance should be launched, as that, um, as that will just like waste cost while making no additional progress. Secondly, the safety net rule, which is a little bit uh, harder to understand, uh, but when the, spot, uh, when the instance is idle, we have to switch to on-demand if CT is larger than RT minus 2D. Um, that is because once the job is idle and the condition is hold, uh, the condition holds, to meet the given deadline for the job, we will not be able to uh, afford switching to a spot instances and then switch to an on-demand once the on, uh, spot instance is preempted. And that is where the 2D comes from. Um, the policy has to play safe after the condition holds and place the job on on-demand instances afterwards. This is to avoid any additional changeover delay that will cause the missing of the deadline. So thirdly, the exploitation rule, which can be also quite uh, intuitive. We argue that once the job start using spot, it should stay on it until the spot instance is preempted. This is because when the spot instance is being uh, used, jumping off the spot instances voluntarily will just bring no benefits, but still wasting the low-cost spot instances that can be used for uh, job computation. So with the three rules, a natural policy we come up with is the greedy policy, where we can keep using spot instances until the safety net rules kick in, and we switch to on-demand until the end. The greedy policy helps us uh, utilize some spot instances, but still make sure we uh, do not make, uh, miss the deadline. However, we can see that there are a huge uh, cost increase from the original optimal policy to this greedy policy. So uh, does there exist any better policy than greedy that we can use 
uh, when we are trying to use both spot and on-demand instances with changeover delay involved. So we first check it from a theoretical perspective for better understanding of the problem. We first analyze the uh, worst case with competitive analysis, and by construction, we found that we can split the deadline into multiple slices, and we can apply the greedy policy in each slice. For example, the, de uh, the deadline is sliced into seven parts at the bottom figure, and the greedy policy is applied in each slice. Um, and we also ask each slice to make one seventh of the job progress. Intuitively, this is better than the greedy policy because greedy policy can only utilize the available spot instances at the very beginning of the execution. However, the time slice policy can spread the job progress across the deadline and utilize some spot instances uh, uh, afterwards. Um, it saves the changeover delays like it used on-demand instance earlier to save some buffer for the changeover delay so we can use those spot instances at the end. Um, in this particular example, time slice policy helps the job leverage spot instances close to the deadline and saves the cost by additional 30%. So with some randomization, we can theoretically prove that the time slice policy get better competitive ratio than the greedy policy, which means it performs better in worst case. Additionally, we analyze the average case for the time slice policy with the stochastic model, and we further find that the more slices we have, the better performance we can get with the, uh, when the changeover delay is relatively small. So now we just going to take the insights from the theoretical uh, analysis and apply it to the uh, real world policy design. If we look deeper into the time slice policy, we can find that when the number of the slices increases, we're actually spreading the job progress across the whole deadline. For example, by definition in the second slice, we guarantee two sevenths of the job progress, which is two sevenths uh, of C0. So for the time slice policy, at the end of any slice i, the current progress should be larger than the expected progress. Based on the theory, we can see that spreading the progress can help both the worst uh, case scenario and also the average case. So when we push the number of slices to infinity, uh, we are actually pushing for such condition holds for any timestamp t, which we call uniform progress. We then derive the uniform progress policy from that by applying the following conditions. Firstly, the uniform progress condition where we switch to on demand when the current job progress is smaller than the expected progress. Secondly, it is the hysteresis condition where we keep the job on on demand to make sure it makes enough uh, progress to avoid hysteresis by frequently jumping on and off on demand instance. It's worth noticing that the uniform progress policy is parameter free and requires no prediction for the spot availability in the future. So in order to evaluate the policies, we further introduce this omnisian policy, which is the theoretical upper bound for the cost savings on the spot instances. The omnisian policy, as its name suggested, it knows the whole future of the spot availability, so the problem becomes a static minimization problem that can be formulated in ILP. So with the ILP solver, we can find the optimal solution that produces the maximum cost savings with a given spot availability. Uh, we will not go deep into the formula, but you can find the details in the paper. Um, on three months of spot V100 availability traces on AWS, we can compare the policies by the gap uh, to the theoretical upper bound of the cost. We can observe that the uniform progress policy has much smaller gap to the upper bound uh, than the greedy policy on both average P25 and P75 cases for various situations uh, indicating its robustness. And it achieves less than 10% gap to the optimal cost. Now, if we take one step further and assume that the lifetime of the next spot instance is available, the uniform progress policy can achieve even closer uh, savings to the optimal savings. That indicates that if the cloud provider can offer this kind of limited information of spot instance, the user can significantly benefit from the uh, information by using both spot and on-demand instances for their deadline-sensitive jobs. 
So the policy can also extend the, uh, to the multiple instances. We observe that multiple in spot instances is likely to be preempted at the same time when the number of instances is relatively small. So we can easily extend the uniform progress by treating the whole cluster of the uh, multiple instances as if it's a single cluster, uh, as if it's a single sing instance. That means any instance being preempted in the cluster means the cluster uh, the cluster is considered to be preempted as well. We evaluated the policy on four and 16 instances and compared them with the theoretical upper bound and getting similar results as uh, on single instance. We also evaluated our policy on uh, real workloads, including some uh, common jobs like machine learning, bioinformatics, and data analytics. And uh, we observed that uniform progress policy can significantly save the cost for those jobs, and it can apply to either tight and loose deadline, where a looser deadline can produce a larger cost saving as expected. In summary, we examined the policy design for running jobs on spot and on-demand instances. We found that it's non-trivial to schedule a deadline-sensitive jobs on both spot and uh, on-demand instances when the changeover delay is involved. Inspired by the theoretical analysis, we developed this uniform progress policy which performs well in practice. As we mentioned before, the automatic spot, uh, bandit spot uh, are implemented in our open source project SkyPilot, and please feel, to, uh, pr please feel free to try it out. Um, there are also more exciting directions to explore for spot instances policies, for example, allowing the job running on different, spot, uh, different zones, regions, or clouds to take advantage of those available spot instances across different uh, resource pools. And also, it can be interesting to look at very large clusters with a mix of spot and on-demand instances. And the third one would be serving workloads on spot instances, because serving is uh, more stateless, and we can uh, migrate the workloads more easily. Uh, with those said, we are excited for the potential extensions of the spot policies and the growth of our Sky Computing vision. Uh, please feel free to contact us uh, by joining our Slack channel below. Thank you.